What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my Zoom virtual studio with a really cool brother who I've actually had the pleasure of speaking with at length off air today, Jeff Simpson. Jeff, man, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here, Jay. It's, uh, it's an honor and I'm super grateful. Thank you. It's, it's awesome to have you, man. And yes, you are a super grateful dude. And that's exactly why I have you on the Jay Campbell podcast. Um, Jeff's website and his bio, he, he, him and his uh, wife, uh, Tara Clements, are um, you know basically involved in fitness, but more so now in helping people spiritually to evolve. And that's the kind of people that I want to bring on the Jay Campbell podcast. As most of you guys know, my listening audience now knows, you know, I've gone full woo. And you know, <laughs> there are many people out there that are like Jeff, who are extremely fit, but at the same time, like walking the spiritual path now. So uh, I'm going to give his bio real quick. He describes himself as a father, a husband, fitness fanatic, nutrition junkie, and soul. And he would describe himself as a soul searcher. Over the past several years, he's found a completely new zest for life. As he told me off air, mm -hmm. he has a very similar path to me. And that's actually how he found me. He heard me on another podcast and he was like, damn, that dude's interesting. And then he found out more about my transition from the fit bro testosterone optimization dude to the raise your vibration dude. And he's like, damn, I want to meet this dude. So he emailed me and something about his energy Again, because a lot of people are emailing me, I want to come on the Jay Campbell podcast, but there was something about his energy. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to let this dude on. He sent me his book, uh, which is awesome. You know, I skimmed through it. I haven't read every, I haven't read it all the way through. Like I, I should probably, but I'm sure after this podcast, I will. But uh, Jeff, let me just, you know, ask you as I do with everybody that comes on the Jay Campbell podcast, man, how, how did you find me? And how did you get on the podcast here today? Well, oh, that's a great question. And, you know, again, thanks for having me on here. Um, yeah, as you were, we were speaking offline, um, you know, I had uh, some, uh, you know, giants of the soul, as you would say, and uh, was going through a, a divorce. Um, at that time, I, like I said, uh, fitness was my thing, um, nutrition, and, you know, you were the go-to guy. Um, I listened to your podcast, I followed you. And as I started to make my consciousness leap, and move into that direction. You were moving into that direction at the same time. I uh, awesome. simultaneously had worked on a book. A lot of things were coming out. I was working on a whole new uh, wellness aspect uh, for my company. And, um, you know, I really just wanted to reach out to you, say thank you, um, send you my book, um, you know, and just let you know how much I appreciated you. I, I tell my wife uh, every now and then, like she was sort of my go-to mentor here and you were my mind mentor. So <laughs> thank awesome, you. Man. And uh, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that first off. And uh, dude, as I told you, and as I say now, man, like 
I'm no mentor. We're all standing on each other's shoulders, you know, on the shoulders of giants, extending, you know, the consciousness to become unified. You know, I'm like looking at that amazing book behind you, the map of consciousness explained, you know, so it's like, you know, like I told you off air, right? Like we are all gravitating towards each other now. Like the, the universe is making sure that people like you and I converge and have these type of discussions because, you know, as I told that woman that I spoke to today, her name was Katie Hess. You know, she's like a alchem- a flower alchemist. Mm. It's all about raising consciousness now, Jeff. There isn't anything else, right? Like you and I can no. get into the weeds and talk about getting abs and how to eat right and how to fast and, you know, all those things that you and I are already masters of. But the, the real jam now, you know, our jam is raising consciousness. And how can we help people achieve a level 10 life we're just doing that, man, because that's all they have to do. Because once you do this, all the other stuff comes as a, as a byproduct. Health, fitness, happiness, you know, more abundance and prosperity. It's just, it, it, you know, the, the problem, as you know, is that most people are still down in this level because they want to not take ownership for their, their life. They, they, they can't and, and, and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, reading through that and, and going through that and they talk about, you know, eight, 85% of the, the world is vibrating under this, you know, 200 level. And I, I was there, you know, I, I took for a long time, you know, maybe I had pride and courage and things that kept me above, but man, like there's just so many people that are just riding below that level. And once, like you had mentioned, you start getting into that, that love and, and that joy, um, man, the people that really come into your life, um, you know, people you wouldn't even known just start appearing. They were there right. all along, but you just didn't know, you know? It's so true, dude. It's so true. I mean, you know, both of us, like we were talking about, like we have very similar life stories. Um, but yeah, dude, like up until I was 41, man, I was like right here too. I was at 175. You yeah. know, I had a good heart. You know, I thought I wanted to help people, but I was so stuck in service to self. You know, that ego mind, that ego consciousness, like, how am I going to get paid? And, you know, I mean, it's just insane. Like how many, you've said it, 85%. Yeah. I mean, that is a statistical fact. I mean, and let's, let's define that for people. Cause I think it's a really good thing. You know, when I talk to people that are Hawkins fans, 175, which is pride, right? So you're 25 yeah. points below the level of integrity. Well, how do you, what defines the level of integrity? I'll tell you what it does. And again, even reading the books, I don't think Hawkins and his and, and his constituents even do a great job of defining it. Uh, that book, as you know, did. But you know, as a as a student of Hawkins, I read all of his other books a long time ago, and I don't think consciousness had advanced enough to truly understand what this matters. But I'll tell you what it, how the best way to do it: if a dog jumps in the water and starts to drown, let's say it just gets knocked into a a, a, a lake or a pond or whatever, another dog if it's walking along the path, will jump in the water and let the dog that can't water, that can't dog paddle for whatever reason, because most dogs can, right? Uh, And and actually where I saw this was on a Twitter thing from like two years ago. It wasn't a dog, it was a cat. But the dog that saw the cat drowning jumped in the water. The cat jumped on the dog's back and the dog dog paddled to shore, saving the cat's life, right? Now, here's the thing, Jeff. When a person is at 175, they will not save another human being's life. Now, here's how I know this, because this has happened to me many times in my life. And you've seen this probably too. It's just happenstance. If you come upon a mall, a a large crowded venue or event, and someone has a heart attack, Or someone falls, or for me, and it's happened many times, but I was recently in a mall in Southern California where a a man went into epileptic seizure. Most people, again, like you say, 85%, will pull out the camera and start videotaping it. They will not render assistance to that struggling, dying, potentially human being. No, they they, they don't. Yeah, they don't know how to put those other people in front of them, right? To give your service, your life for someone else. It's, it's, it's a, it's a shame that they would rather take a video, 
pull their phone out than to save someone on the fact that they may worry that maybe they don't know exactly what they're doing or that they're going to get in trouble. Like, I mean, come on. Yep, man. I love if, you, brother. You got it. If you, you, if you exactly. truly care for those individuals or want to help, you're not going to worry about what happens, you know, like. You got it, bro. Oh, I mean, dude, see, that's so beautiful. I don't have to say anything because people like us just instantly know it's a knowing it's a cosmic awareness of who fucking cares if you don't know CPR, who cares if you think that you can't help them because blank, you know, insert, it's all fear, dude. It's, it's fear. totally fear. You're stuck yeah. right here due to fear. And you will literally watch that person die rather than to render aid. Now people like you and I, and again, we're not better than anybody, but, when you yeah. overcome that fear and you move your consciousness up into the three and 400 levels, which is where most people that have advanced their consciousness stay, right? Because I always say like, you and I know about 500 and 540, but to be yeah. there all the time is impossible. We have egos. We are in the physical body. Absolutely. Gonna, shit's going to happen. People cut us off, right? Yeah. Stuff happens. But the goal as a, as a consciously aware being is to stay between 350 and 500 and all the time, right? And even yeah. when something happens and you get cut off, you have a brilliant meditation. We're going to talk about mindfulness and morning and 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 mind and morning rituals in a minute, but you have a brilliant meditation, you're you're in the you're in like state of grace, and you get in your car, bro, and you go to your work or your gym or wherever you're going in the morning, and some crazy bandito, you know, cuts you off. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do, right? But the master realizes that they're being pulled into that lower vibrational frequency. And, and it's like, hmm, this is interesting. I'm not going oh, yeah. it, to. It's crazy. This happens, to, this happens to me all the time. And, and, you know, I've taken the other approach where those people, they'll just come and they'll cut me off or they want to get in. And I just let them do it because, you know, maybe maybe I'm helping them have a better day. Maybe so, I'm How about what Hawkins says in the book? The one line he says, the first thing that you can do to change right now is to let people get in front of you in traffic. Right, right. It's crazy, right? Like you, it's so easy to want to get caught up into it and get sucked right in, but you, you can't, you know? Bro, bro, I, truth be told, I've never told anybody this. I mean, my wife knows. When she first met me, so nine years ago, and I was coming out of my divorce and my kids were kidnapped from me and I was put in jail and I lost pretty much everything. The only thing I didn't lose was my sense of sanity. Mm -hmm. um, I was that guy that if you cut me off, bro, I would get out of the car and I would come <laughs> up to the car and I would straight up say like, you better give me a good reason why you cut me off. Cause I'm going to pull you out right now and throw you in front of another car. I don't give a shit. I mean, I was gone. Right. So like, I know what it's like to be down here. We all do. It's like, yeah. you know, the great Walter Russell says, you come out of the womb and coming out of the womb is trauma, is pure trauma anyway. You know, you've been in this, you know, fertilization sack and it's like amniotic fluid and everything is amazing. And also, <clears throat> boom, you're ejected into the matrix. And so you're already traumatized, right? Like, so it's like you come out of the womb at the bottom of the jungle and now the beginning of the climb to the top of the mountain. And there's many paths to get to the top of the mountain, but it's full of trauma. So it's like, you just have to be okay with the trauma. And you and I, very similar life stories, you know, we weren't, we were fighting the trauma. We were in resistance. We didn't have allowance or acceptance. It was like, fuck you. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, that's, those are those things that you have to, you have to fight through and you have to persevere, you know, if you want to find that, that, that essence of your life to be able to move forward. I mean, um, you know, we're on this path that was set for us. Um, you know, there isn't a this or that, this is, right. you know, our intentions are going to dictate where we go. And, you know, we had to get through that trauma to get where we're at now. I mean, it's. Bro, so, so so much so uh, you just said that your intentions i mean it's crazy to think you know you just said it you know again the hawkinsism uh there's no this or that i mean everything is happening exactly as it's intended and until you get to a place of allowance of that statement i mean michael jacob and i just did this amazing 
video record, you know, it's essentially just me and him one on one. And we were basically doing a review of the map of consciousness book. And um, it was just him freestyling and, and, and both of us freestyling. And now I'm editing it and it's going to my copywriter. And we're going to make it into a PDF that we give away to people for free. Cause as you know, bro, that book is a masterpiece, right? I mean, it, it, so many people can gain value and wisdom from that book, but like, hmm. that's yes. the thing about guys like you and me and Michael Jaco and guys like us is like, even when we want to control things and we were like, and we know what the right thing to do is you just have to let go because you have no control over anything, but this, your consciousness. Absolutely. It, bro, there's nothing else. Like literally break it all down. Don't have control over anything except how you react to what happens to you. That's, that's so true. I mean, and like you said, uh, uh, Michael, like he had some things too. I mean, he, he, some of the things he said in being uh, ex-military, you know, and Bro, they tried to kill him when he came out and was like, look, man, I, I, I know how to remote view and I'm a consciousness warrior and intuitive master. They're like, you can't say that. <laughs> I mean, they try to take him down. I mean, he's yeah. already been taken down multiple times. This is like third climb back up. Yeah. It's crazy. The things he talked about were, you know, just saying, talking about fears and doubts and other things. And, uh, you know, those were good things to hear, especially from well, someone who's ex-military. You and I are so similar. Look what's on your finger and look what's on my finger. That's right, brother. <laughs> it, uh, so when you hear it from someone like that, you know, who's, who always had such an analytical view of everything, um, you know, that's what you do in the military, right? Like you, everything is so regimented and, and well, processed. Why don't you talk a little bit about your military background and your military experience? I think it's relevant. Why not? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I spent 10 years in the military. Um, that might have been uh, some of the reasons that, that set me down uh, paths that maybe I didn't want to go. You know, I walked in uh, trying to find my essence, you know, trying to find my life, trying to figure out what it was. And I, I, uh, I set my worth to, to achievements. You know, I was 18 years old, joined the military. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, you donated I, your body to science. Yeah. You know, I did. I did. <laughs> we, we talked about you know, that. Off air. Anybody, but who cares though? Because you now with your appreciation, you're 46, you're just a little bit younger than me. Um, you have an appreciation for everything as a learning experience, right? Like all of that stuff was what you learned. That's, that's what built you into the Jeff Simpson that you are now. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've taken all those experiences and then just had to, Oh, apply them to my life and, and, and figure out who I was. But, uh, you know, it was definitely a big part of my life and, you know, um, seeing the world and, and going to a fight overseas. Um, you know, it gave me that, that, that pride and that courage, some of the things we talked about, but, uh, you know, I was living, uh, for someone else besides myself, you know, exactly. I, I was living, but we, we all are dude. Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, I, you know, Again, I'll share with you, never said this before, but like it took me to go to jail, you know, yeah. to be in jail and having a guy, a Mexican dude, you know, I still think of him to this day. I don't know who he is, just met him in jail, you know, one orange jumpsuit to another. You know, he said to me, bro, because, you know, what I was accused of was fake. It was, you know, domestic violence that didn't happen. And, you know, they used it against me because the system's broken and whatever. I, I still got there because of that poor choices. But, you know, he was like literally telling me, he's like, bro, he's like, you can't, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You, you got to end it because once they pull this card one time on you, it just can happen again. Yeah. And it can happen again. So let me just give you advice, you know, and I'm not your attorney. He goes, but I've been in here twice now for the same reason that you're in here. And he goes, everybody, most, for the most part, that has a domestic violence charge is not guilty of it. That's just the system. The yeah. system is designed, as you know, to break up families, to not have the father in the home. So anyway, oh. he says to me, he goes, look, man, he goes, I'll probably never see you again. You know, you're clearly not a dude that's like a felon. But take this as words of wisdom. He goes, when you get out, get divorced because you don't need to be back here and your kids need you as a father in their life. So at that point in time, Jeff, in my life, I was like, not like, like, you know, again, I was like, I'm going to fix this. You know, I don't know why she did this to me. I mean, at that time I had no idea anything that had actually happened to me. I didn't figure out anything, but I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, being a strong alpha male, I'm going to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Everything's going to be good. 
So I got out and I went and saw my attorney and my attorney was like, bro, you know, he brought it out with me. He was like, you cannot be around your wife, which became my ex-wife. You are now under the care and concerns of me, which is to preserve your freedom. You know, and he talked to me for an hour and was like, these are the things you got to do now. And this is how your life is going to change. It was like very clear. The first off, that, you know, that awesome Mexican dude in an orange jumpsuit gave me great advice. And then second thing was like, I have to change my life now, Jeff. Like I have yeah. to make amends for the way I lived my life previously. And I now have to start taking ownership. Again, it's that whole go from here. You know, to get right over the line, right? To get to that 225 level where you're like, wow, fuck, everything that happens to me is my fault. Yeah. I mean, bro, you know I'm telling my 11 year old daughter this shit every day. She's still in the dad. It's not my fault. <laughs> but it's true. It, I mean, right? Like, it is our fault, even if it's not, because until we take ownership for who we are as beings, it's not going to change. No, that's absolutely true. And I, and I, you know, I could totally relate to that. I, I going through uh, my second divorce, I, I did the same thing. Right. And finally, towards the end, I said, this can't be like, you know, a condemnation. I need to turn it into like a liberation. Exactly. You know, I needed to set myself free. You know, I needed to be able to grow and holding me back, you know, just like, I wanted to do everything I could, like you said, salvage it and make it work. But, um, there just comes to a point where you get pulled in time and time again, and you never move up that, that map. You never move up to that higher consciousness. I just didn't know it, you know? And so it's that, that saying like that, uh, unconscious unconsciousness here I was, you know, I just didn't. Unconscious of your unconsciousness. Exactly. You know, but because you're a strong person like me, you think you can fix it. Absolutely. I'll put it back together again. And then you ignore all the warning signs, your buddies, your family, the people that really truly love and care for you. They're like telling you, dude. And, and the thing is, is one time, you know, you go through it and, and, and you, you deal with it and you think you're going to do the same things the same way again. And then again, trying to fix it, trying to solve all the problems, but then fear, right? Fear is a fear of, what people would say, what people would think of me. You know, I had set my, my self-worth on, on, on family. I thought I was a, a, a good human. Uh, I need to have the job. I need to have the money. I need to have everything. I did this once. Where did that get me? I, I tried to do it all over again, the same exact way. Uh, it wasn't about me. It was about other people. It was about setting my self-worth on, on material things. And it wasn't until I had to end that meet my wife now who just basically told me, you know, that's not, that's not the way Why? you, you got to work into this realm. If you're going to make changes, I mean, way, way wiser than I ever was. Well, I mean, we're, 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 we're spiritual brothers, dude. Cause as you know, you know, my, my wife, Monica, same thing. I mean, you know, she's my greatest spiritual mentor. I mean, without her, dude, I would be lost. Fucking lost. I mean, she did. She taught me the same thing. I mean, I, it's funny because like I think about how emotionally irresponsible and reactive I was, you know, back in 2012 when we met. And so what she saw in me and she always will tell me that, you know, she put her heart, her head on my heart and she felt my heart. And she was like, whoa, like this is the guy that I want to be with. But bro, make no bones. I was not that guy. I wasn't yeah. ready to be a woman. around. I mean, I was fascinated by her level of power. Like she was a profoundly empowered spiritual being, not just a woman. I mean, I was just like around her. Like I was kind of like, wow. I mean, you know, when we first met and I, you know, we match.com and I met her at a restaurant and I just verbal diarrhea all over my story. And she's just like, no, <laughs> you know, and bro, I, my intention was to literally have her get up and be like, I'm sorry, this isn't going to work. And then I'd be like, yeah, that's what I figured. See a peace out. Right. And she was just like, Interesting. And then she told me her story. It was like 12, 15 minutes and she had her own story. But I, I was like, wait a minute. You're, you're actually happy. Yeah. And I know, she straight right? up looks at me and she's like, well, yeah. She goes, isn't everybody? And I'm like, dude, that was when I was kind of like, wow. 
And so for our first six months together, dude, I was gone. I was like a puppy dog. I was like, I'm not even worthy of this woman. I, I'm so broken, you know, but she, I, I, she lifted me up. It was, I was the same way. And, and it wasn't until, you know, later on when, you know, we talked about some things and, and life and, and just spirituality. I remember her uh, talking to me one day about uh, some books or something and I didn't even really see anything around there. And she was telling me about, she's reading this and reading this, you should really try this. And I, I agreed. And all of a sudden, you know, she opens her closet and there's like pff, hundreds of books. And it was like, I was really, I didn't know what you were going to think. I didn't know, <laughs> like, I didn't know if you were going to be at that level yet. And from that point on, it just was like, sky's the limit you know That's awesome, so the fight, it's like the as i say like the um it's an avalanche yeah you know of, of desiring more wisdom and desiring more of like that right so yeah dude like your wife and my wife were basically like the spiritual containers for us to literally expand um like the gal that i spoke to, to her earlier today katie Hess, the flower the al flower alchemist she was like it's about like finding someone as a mentor, which was our wives to expand our containers as far and as wide as we could expand them. And then just to allow it to just wash over us like an avalanche. Oh, it, it totally was a snowball effect. I mean, once that had came down, then it was just like, Oh, now you should try this and this. And then you read and you journal and you do meditate. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, where was this? And, you know, thank you for showing me the light here. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about mindfulness and a daily routine. Like, you know, how important is it? Cause, cause we, we look, dude, we, you know, people talk about it. it's cliche now. Right. But so okay. many people really don't even understand what, what I call, you know, mindfulness is. And it's, it's not sitting in the Lotus position, meditating for 30 minutes twice a day. It's truly clearing out and turning off the drunk monkey. I call it the drunk monkey, right? You know, yeah. the ego mind, you know, whispering in your ears, telling you that you're not worth it or that you're not good enough or you don't have enough money or lack or scarcity or whatever bullshit that pops into your mind. And and Jeff, that can be done in five minutes a day, dude. Oh, it, it it's totally true. And, and I was that guy in the beginning, you know, when, when her and I first dated, I remember early on she stayed over and, uh, you know, I woke up the next morning and you know, what do I do? First thing, I, I check my phone. I turn on the TV. I fill my mind with just mindless nonsense. Yeah. And I look over at her and she's thinking, what are you doing? Like, what is going on here? And I'm like, you don't do this? It's like, no. <laughs> we, we, well, my wife literally leaves early in the morning and just goes downstairs and sits outside in her backyard, you know, gra grounds one of our dogs, my pit bull's lazy. He sleeps in and the little rat dog, it goes with her, you know, he's up and he's running around and, you know, and I, she always wakes up before me, but dude, she wouldn't even think of checking technology till at least 8 a.m. You know, she's out there in her private thoughts, journaling, watching the sun come up for usually two hours in the dark. Yeah. You know, it's big now. Like I've totally turned our routine around. Like I get up in the morning I don't even, I don't check my phone. Don't look at anything. Yeah. We have a few minutes together. We, That's we, awesome. part of our company, we, she was huge and passionate about doing journals. So she wanted to create some gratitude journals. We did, we nice. spend 10 minutes every morning. We both just sit there in silence, fill out our day, um, have a little bit of a chat. And then from there, I, I go spend another 10 minutes upstairs, total silence. Um, I work on breath work. I mean, really just take in that moment. You know, I think people just get so caught up in this hustle and bustle life. Like I'm talking 20 minutes, 30 minutes of your life. If you really want to com compact it. Right. And, you know, um, and, and this 20 minutes goes throughout your day. And then that day goes into the next day and then the next day. And it's just like, if you were to learn to play the piano or you, you pick up a new skill, this is the same thing. We write these things down about our gratitude, you know, our life, our blessings. And then we sit there and we can sit there in silence and work on our body and to, to have those, that time. I mean, that's, it's, 
it's so important. I mean, and we can make this a routine day in and day out. I mean, the things that come from that, you take that gratitude throughout the day, you know, you take that lovingness and that those vibrations. And I mean, it radiates, you know, I know people feel it throughout the day. You know, they, they want to be around you. They want to talk to you. They want to know what's going on. And I don't even have to say anything. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with U S Navy seal, Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 PM Pacific standard time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level Intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health, to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself, helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. When I get around people that speak in the way that I like get tuned to speaking, you know, you said lovingness. It's like, wow. Like, but like, you have to read Hawkins to even say that word. It's like a, it's like oh. a being st a state of being to even understand that word. So it's beautiful that you said that, but like, I, I want to expand on what you said, because I mean, even in the morning now for me, my morning is a ritual, bro. I have the eight sleep mattress, right? So it's programmed to wake us up. You know, she wakes up before her, her programming and I, and I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, we can talk about this, but as you and I were saying off air, the energy of the planet right now is insane, right? Like the Schumann resonance yeah. is off the chart. We're <laughs> in the age of Aquarius. We have all this golden age energy that's bombarding planet earth right now. So if you're sensitive to it, you're walking this path, you know, you feel yeah. it. So there's been mornings dude, where I just woke up. Like yesterday I woke up. I mean, I'm not joking. It was 410. And I was like, what? I mean, so, yeah. but I will literally just sit in my bed yeah. And lay there and just be, give praise of like, this is insane. Like, I'm so grateful that I'm alive and that I have my fingers and I, I can move, you know, and, I, and I'm not, for, for that day, and this is very rare that I wake up before my wife, but for that day, I was just like not waking her up. I didn't want her to wake up, you know, it's too early. Mm -hmm. But I laid there for at least 10 minutes, just being grateful, right? Yeah. And just being grateful energetically, just propels you right because at 410 bro i'm stiff you know yeah. i shouldn't be like ready to get out of bed but that gratitude that i gave my physical beingness getting out i was like by the time i got my clothes on put you know put a pair of shorts on and a hoodie i was ready oh it, it totally changes your mindset i'd love to wake up you, you know uh, stretch feel just exactly. get in tune with your body right this is like we have to live in this avatar. We have to live in this suit, but we have to take care of it, right? It's like, we, we can't have a sick body no. and, and, and a healthy mind. The two, the two aren't going to mesh. No, bro. And that's a good point. I'm glad you said that. There are way too many people in the spiritual community who are absolutely fat and inflamed <laughs> and broken. And they think that it's okay because they're like, it's not about the body. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. For the time we're here, we have to live in this suit. We have to take care of it. It's one vessel, one vessel. And you need to maximize the vessel. No, it's it's super important, and that that's always been my my mantra and what I do now. Right? It's all about that. Right? The health, mind, soul, that mind, body. Like we have to be connected in all three states. Right? We can't just be fit and forget about the spiritual part. We can't just be spiritual and forget about the body, and and then the mind. Everything just meshes and, and connects. I mean, one will feed off the other. I mean, it's a big snowball effect. And uh, it's I, I get so excited talking about it because people tend to just focus on one area or another. And that's why this I love having this whole wellness factor and just be able to intertwine everything and get people thinking. When you talk to your clients now, um, and this is a personal question, because you know, it affects my me too. Um, how much do you bring up the spiritual componentry like at the beginning now? Like where you, you know, because obviously, dude, you and I are masters. We can get people leaned out. We can get them less inflamed. We can build yeah. muscle. But 
you know, how much do you really now like get into their personality and be like, look, you are not going to make any lasting changes until you love and trust yourself. Like how much do you have that conversation? Uh, now? Man, that is the best loaded question I've heard yet. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> over this last, last few months, like my wife and I, we've really, really focused on that because this, again, we were into the, the, the fitness realm or again, Hey, let's work on your body through nutrition. Yep. But once we really started to mesh that, I mean, I come out the box right away and I tell them like, listen, you give me three months. This is what we're going to do. We're going to work on a fitness component. We're going to work on a nutrition component. But while this whole thing is going on, we're going to feed in this whole wellness thing, whether that's through, like, I want you to start off baby steps, you know, work through uh, whether it's uh, meditation, what, find whatever it is, yoga. I mean, it could be anything, right? Just whatever that thing is that's going to get you into there and uh, journaling, you know, I, even with the journal, I say, listen, you don't have to talk about anything. If even if you want to journal about wanting to be fit, if you, if you want to journal about whatever, just right. be grateful for whatever that is, be thankful, talk about it and, and have it mesh because you made a good point. And I think you have to have all three, if this is going to be sustainable, like you can't just focus on one or another. So we've kind of made it our mission to come out right away and say, listen, we're going to talk about all three things. And we've kind of changed this into the whole uh, wellness factor, right? Because I believe in it so much that I think we can't deny this. And so many people, they're not there or right. they just don't know. And, you know, that was one of the reasons I wrote the book, you know, that was um, getting off topic there, but yeah. No, I, no, 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 it's good. No, you're not off topic. It's good. It's all, it's all good. I mean, bro, when I talk to people now and you already know, I don't really do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. Everything is scalable for me, which I'm blessed to be able to do that. But like if somebody if I if, if somebody really wants to coach with me first off you know I I ask them in you know uh, an introductory call I, I ask them straight up right to their face I go do you understand what it means when I ask you the question do you truly love and trust yourself and I look at them you know again on a Zoom call like this I look yeah. at them right in the eyes like hardcore I give them the you know hundred yard stare and I want to see their physiological reaction to that. I want to see their body language and their movement patterning because I, as an energy reader now, I know instantly if there's any deviance or body rocking or uncomfortability of me saying that to them, then I instantly know that they struggle with love and trust of self. And as you know, again, from Hawkins and from the stuff, all the stuff you've read, and I'm sure your wife has helped you and inspired you too, dude, it doesn't matter what you do if you don't love and trust yourself because it's a house of cards. It's going to come down. Oh, man, you, 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 you have to take care of yourself. You're the, you're the, the master of your own domain. Exactly. You have to love yourself if you're going to make those changes. So it, it, it's an amazing point. I mean, to be able to see someone and they're, and they're willing to work on that, then the rest comes easy to me. How many people yeah. do you and I know from being fit bros for so long? And I want to finish the show with like talking about your transition and my transition, but how many people do we know who look absolutely <laughs> amazing on the outside and they're absolutely a steaming pile of dog shit inside? Tons. 90% yeah. 90 I mean, of that... people in fitness. 90%. Yeah. Because they, they do yeah. all you, the you, external you... work, but they do no internal work. No. They're, they're, they're a shell. They're a, they're, they're a body with a, with a mindless soul, you know, walking a around shell. in a, a beautiful shell, a ripped shell. Beautiful shell. Yeah. And, 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 and unfortunately, no, and, and, and unfortunately it's sad to say, but they're the kind of people that will, will influence others. And, you know, I, I want to make that change. I mean, you can, you can be strong, you can be fit, but if you have that, that, that inner awareness, inner peace, you know, you can help people too, right? It, you don't have to just be, you know, shredded to the bone and just, and just blurted out to the world. a bunch well, of it's So it's so beautiful. What you just said inner peace. It's cosmic, cosmic knowing is what Hawkins would call it. You know, again, you, you know, people like you and I, we say that to people that are not where they should be or where they're not doing the inner work. And they're like, no, you mean believe. And I'm like, no, I believe, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but 
to what you're saying. <laughs> the people that are doing the work and do love and trust themselves are never going to let themselves go to shit because they have pride and passion yeah. in conveying a lifestyle. It's not the bullshit. Oh, yeah, I, I was 25 and I was ripped for a show one time and then I just let myself go because I don't love and trust myself, right? So it's like mm-hmm. most people who truly walk the walk and talk the talk also look the part because it's, 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 it's one holistic system. Yeah, I mean, if you don't love and you don't trust yourself, then yeah, how are you going to say, well, I can take care of myself you know, nutritionally or I can take care of myself, you know, uh, fit, you know, it's, it's not going to work, right. You, no. You're, you're going to lose it somewhere. Like it you works. have to intertwine that, that mind and, and that, that soul with people. And if, especially if you're going to coach them to, to really ingrain it into them. And, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's, that's, uh, you know, we're on our level. Like it, I, I totally completely understand that that's not going to happen. And, right. You know, so I bring it along super slow, give them the easy stuff. And it's like, they don't realize that they're doing it, but they are. And that's yeah. sort of the raising them into this, this next realm. And hopefully they start to take that and say, oh, okay, I kind of like this. And it goes back to, hey, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to love myself. So, I mean, yeah, it's not easy, dude. I mean, you know, you, you, you have to be very careful too, when you now, work with people and coach people who are truly open to that. Because again, you know, we're so conditioned in the matrix to, to not love and trust ourselves. And it's like, especially as like strong, powerful men, you know, you're taught to like take care of everybody else, but yourself. It's wrong to love and trust yourself, Jeff. Yeah. You got to love your wife and you got to love your kids, but what about yourself? And so that's why so many people lose themselves because they don't do any work for it. No. And that, and that's all ego driven, right? Exactly. Like everything can ego and the ego is, will, will, will take you down. It doesn't care. It's primitive. All it wants to do is survive. Survival <laughs> programming. Exactly. Oh man. Like it's, we, we have to constantly fight it. it it's, it's a work in progress and it's, it's never going to end. I have to fight it all the time. My ego wants to come out. Yep. Uh, yep. I get excited. I get, you know, Oh, this and that. And I have to step back for a second and say, Hey, you know, this, just let this happen. Ego step back and just squash it. I mean, it's, it's tough, but it, you know, it, bro. And then I'll take it a step further. Even when you do do the work, the inner work, you, you're so always battling the ego, the, the ego, that then it becomes a spiritual ego. Oh yeah. Right. Where it's like, okay, well I'm doing the work and I know I'm right here and that, you know, this person's not here, but like, how am I judging them? You can't, oh, it's, it's, it's it's letting go of the wanting to judge them. Yeah, and you and you and that's like the worst thing. I I I don't judge them because they don't know. I was there. I didn't know. They don't know. And there was people that were probably way above me that were saying, "I can't believe this guy's doing this," and or you know, "Hey, I, right. I feel bad that he doesn't get to see these things that we see." And now that I've like my eyes are open, my you know, I, I'm seeing things for the first time that I haven't seen you know, in, in, in 40 years. And yeah, I don't judge them one bit because I, I understand where they're coming from. And I, it's, bro, I sense that about you, man. That's amazing. Not, um, uh, that's still my biggest issue is uh, spiritual ego, you know, judging people that are low vibration, you know, even, even being aware of it, you know, the, the mind, the ego mind is, that's the first challenge. You know, it wants to categorize and classify things. Yeah. Oh, well, I do the work and I know I'm here and that person's down there. And so boom, you want to, again, categorize them as beneath you. And it's like, no, you have to let go. You know, the great comment from uh, Hawkins is everybody is rowing their own canoe. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like that is, what I default to when I want to classify, I'm like, nope, they're, that's, they're perfectly fine to be where they are. They're perfectly okay to not be at the level of awareness that I am or that Jeff, Jeff is. It, it, it's okay because they are all on the same path that you and I are on. They're just at a different level and a different rate and speed. And that's perfectly fine. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I always 
uh, relate to now. And I find it's, it's such a big thing is especially like uh, with technology and the social media with these days. And, and this was one of the things that really made me clue into, you know, the judgment, like, you know, you have this, this generation that's just grown up, you know, social media and this is all they know. And this is their right. life. Uh, people like you and I, you know, like we, we came from that generation where we didn't have that in the beginning, exactly. you know, exactly. we, 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 we were in nature. We, we played, we, we hung out. We, we talked to the can, bro. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. Right. <laughs> we, we, we talked to people face to face, right. No, we man. had human conversations, so, you know, th- there's, I had a lot of judgment in the beginning to say, Oh man, I, I can't believe they do this and that, but they just don't know. And, and don't. so I took it the other way and said, you know, I think it's, we have a moral responsibility we do, well, especially our generation. We've seen both sides to say, "Hey, you know, you can use bro, social." Bro, to that point, they're taught socialism is good. Yeah, think about that. They think that social. They have been engineered to think that socialism is like a good system of government. I mean, think about that. So, to your point, and again, no judgment, but like, it is our moral responsibility to not be judgmental. To come from a place of neutral observation. Yeah. And as the neutral observer, be compassionate, kind, concerned, creative, and caring, right? All the C words, because if we're not, dude, like these people, I mean, like, you know, I'll use my own daughter's case in point. My daughter who's 13 is an ascended master. Yeah. My daughter who's 11 has the most amazing ambition, but she's down here. It's not her mm-hmm. fault. It's not her fault. You know, so I have to treat them equally with the same kindness, concern, compassion, and creativity, because they're both the same. It's just one is walking the path faster than the other one is, but there's no difference. No, no. But you and I were brainwashed by society to want to categorize again, based on where they're at and you just can't do it. And especially with these millennials, you know, to speak about them, like you said, bro, they've literally been baptized in technology. They grew yeah. up with, Hey Siri, hey Alexa, hey Google, and they get the answer. They don't do any work. There's no curiosity or intellectual creativity to get the answer. So imagine that the entire human species that's under the age of 25 has been given the answers to everything, bro. They never had to, they had never had to. Instant gratification. Things were at their fingertips. So we had to. If I wanted to learn something, man, I had to go to the library or, or I had to go. The Dewey ask Decimal someone, System, the card catalog. Right. <laughs> I, I had to learn from another human being. I mean, at least I, I, I got to interact, right? It was no different than the gym, right? I, like I went and I and I went to the gym. I didn't know anybody, you know, there was no online. I, I went and talked to uh, Johnny Muscles and said, hey, show me what I got to do. Exactly. You know, like. Exactly. It, it's just it's too easy for them they 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 don't know any better and no, i mean no and they have no way by the way to discern right that's the word what is the right way versus the wrong way because there's so many fake people online you know you know, again with holographic social media how would they know but like you said they've never actually had to do the work themselves so there's no way to discern no. what's real and what's not no, it's, it's about, oh, I see someone online. And, and again, I have a 10-year-old daughter and, you know, I've had to explain to her, you know, hey, this person may have a million likes, but that doesn't mean they know what they're talking about or and what they're saying is truth. Like, it's just, it could be utter crap. Like, it's just, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tough world. To have. Yeah, it is, man. I mean, it's the hardest job now today is being a parent, like from our generation and seeing our kids you know, be influenced by this stuff. And then at the same time, doing the best job that we can do as parents to make sure that they still have curiosity and that they still have creativity and that they still, you know, critically think because dude, they're mostly, and I don't want to like, you know, this has been a phenomenal podcast. I don't want to get stuck in rabbit hole here because we could, but like, (laughs) it's very simple for these kids today. So, and so it's up to me and you and our wives and our, you know, and, and other adults that we, you know, roll with to make sure that our children, again, have creativity and have curiosity 
and have critical thinking skills because, bro, they ain't going to get it in school. School has now become indoctrination camps of go along, get along nonsense, not teaching independent thought, not teaching entrepreneurism. It, it's literally like, how do I create this one giant, uh, well, how would I call it? Like, how do you become a cubicle person your whole yeah. life? That's what they want. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, I got to see that firsthand, you know, being at home with my daughter too, like, especially during, during COVID and oh, dude. You know, being able to teach and, and, and homeschool. And it was just blown away, blown away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have to do that now. It's, it's, it's literally our responsibility to ensure, cause yeah, both of mine are, both of my children are unvaccinated. The, the fifth grader is still in remote, what they call distance learning, you know, LA Unified School District yeah. sparse. The seventh grader is off the system now because she she doesn't she's not vaccinated so she can't go but she is in a homeschooling program that you know is independent and the differentiation from that to the the, the school schooling to public schooling is a farce but I, I won't go any further dude I mean again it's it's more about for us as parents yeah teaching curiosity teaching cur- creativity and, tr- and teaching cr- critical thinking skills if they have those three things they will still go far. The indoctrination camps cannot prevent them from going far. They just have to have those. And it's, again, it was our job as parents to instill those values. Uh, yeah, it's super important. I mean, we have to we have to stick with it no matter what happens and, and hope for the best. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> well, this has been a phenomenal podcast. If somebody wants to work with you and your wife, what's the best way they can do that? They can reach us at... Uh, our website, healthmindsoul.com. Um, again, we do everything. We're really, really working on this whole wellness, uh, fitness, nutrition thing. So you want to come to us, you really want to work on that mind, the body, spirit, we're definitely going to help you. Um, we're at, uh, at Health Mind Soul Life on Facebook and at Health Mind Soul Life on uh, Instagram. Uh, I was DM- totally just going to ask if you wanted to pump your socials, man. Well, Jeff, man, um, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you coming on this podcast today. I think we had an amazing conversation. Uh, we didn't really even get too negative in a really, really negative world. Um, I think you're an amazing soul. You, you have a very bright light. I, again, we're very connected and, and resonate. And like I said, you know, once we'll, once this podcast ends, we'll talk about connecting in person at some point. Cause I, I, I definitely sense that about you that, you know, that that'll be something that's great. So to all the amazing people who watch it and support the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing and fine people that come on. So please go to Jeff's website. It's healthmindstole.com and check them out on social media too. And as always, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see you guys very soon. <laughs>